Well, life certainly hits you hard, doesn't it, ladies and gentlemen? The US women's national team was just knocked out of the World Cup by Sweden on penalties, obviously led by none other than Megan Rapino, a very well-liked figure in the world of sport. I mean, how could she not be, right? She's an advocate for men playing against women and would welcome men into women's football. Enough said there. But this US women's national team has actually caught a lot of backlash on social media very early on, unfortunately, because in one of the games, they actually refused to sing the national anthem. I think most of the team just stood there with their mouths closed. Now, for anybody who's into football and, you know, just sport in general, to not sing the national anthem is actually quite a huge sign of disrespect. You know, in England, a long time ago, there was a massive uproar when the players weren't singing it here. However, I think their agendas were a little bit different. I don't think they really cared and wanted to be there. The women's national team, unfortunately, is more political, right? As everybody's told, you know, America is this terrible place to live in. But on top of that controversy, again, in their last game against Sweden, six more players decided to not sing the national anthem. So we've gone from Megan Rapinoe kneeling during the anthem to this. If it looks a little bit brighter, by the way, just to interject, the sun's come out conveniently for the video, so I've had to turn the camera light up just a tiny little bit. But if you dislike your country that much, right, and you think it's a terrible place to live in, why represent it? Money? Camera time? Who knows? Step aside and allow somebody who's a little bit more patriotic to come in and play, because I'm pretty sure they would have cared a lot more. Now, it's fair to say women's football is becoming more and more popular, right? More and more people are watching it, especially in England, and I'm sure it's the same in America as well. So with young women and girls watching this event, what kind of message is that sending to these women, these girls? Disrespect your country, don't sing the national anthem. That's a terrible message to send. You know, there's always this argument that's made that, you know, with how men act in the game, it's influencing young boys and how they play. So obviously it's going to be the same here. And it's funny because a lot of women in this team would argue, well, we've done so much for women's football. We're the pioneers of women's football. And I would highly disagree. You know, the message you're sending is highly destructive. And on top of Megan Rapinoe saying, well, you know, men should play in women's sports. That's not really a good thing for the sport as a whole and women's sport. Is it? No, I would argue actually the women's side of things in England, the Women's Football Association in the UK has done a lot more for women's football because most of the time we don't put the politics at the forefront. Unlike, again, Megan Rapinoe, who just can't help herself everywhere she goes. She talks about equal pay. Women deserve equal pay in the world of football, which if you're trying to intentionally bankrupt the women's side of things, then go ahead because it just doesn't make any sense. There's not enough money in that side to get the same wages, nowhere near the same amount of wages. So it's kind of destructive if you ask me. But she stepped up for the penalty against Sweden that would have sent America through. And well, as you all know, lo and behold, she missed it. It's quite interesting. Isn't it? Now, if you're a football fan still watching right now, you know players miss penalties all the time. It's a high pressure thing, right? If you're a Man City fan, especially, I'm sure the feeling will still be um, quite fresh. <laughs> Sorry. But when all eyes are on you, and that's on purpose, she's always wanted the attention. This is why she does the things she does. Nobody kneels during the national anthem if it's not for attention, right? And when you've put yourself on a pedestal above most women and tried to put yourself above the men's side of things as well, you know, you're going to have to deliver. You're going to have to back it up. And well, you choked, you bottled it and you didn't. And this is where arrogance and having a huge ego and thinking you're better than everybody else is a huge detriment, especially if you can't back it up you know and this is the case for most people we see it all the time in sports when somebody thinks they're better than they are and they fail people just celebrate it people don't like arrogance being pushed onto them people don't like egos and wokeness being pushed onto them so the usa could have gone through if megan rapino stepped up to the plate and scored right so uh, still she's talking about equal pay that's all she can talk about take a listen is there a memory that stands out to you right now in this moment? Oh, um, I mean, probably equal pay chance um, after the final. Um, and I think, you know, they were saying equal pay, but could have been saying a lot of things. I think this team has always fought for so much more and uh, that's been the most rewarding part for me, of course, playing in World Cups and winning championships and doing all that. But, um, you know, to know that we've used our really special talent to do something, you know, that's really like changed the world forever. 
I think that means the most to me and, you know, the players in this locker room here. Um, they're just getting started. And, you know, to all the players that I've played with, obviously, um, you know, who know what it's like to be in the grind. Um, that's the best part. And this is what I mean. Okay, women like Megan Rapino don't actually care about the progress of women's sports because if they did, they would realize the equal pay side of things in football just doesn't make any sense. It wouldn't be a positive for them. Again, it would bankrupt the whole thing. So what they really do care about is the exposure on themselves and the attention on them and, you know, maybe how much money they can get. Instead of doing the talking on the pitch, which most people do, right? Most footballers do do the talking on the pitch. She does it off the pitch and when what you're preaching isn't showing up on the field you can't deliver people are just going to look at you and they're not going to be too fond of you especially again when you're sending a terrible message to young women and girls because all they're going to hear is one of the most influential and popular women footballers say well we need equal pay equal pay is what matters and then on top of that well men should also play in women's football i would welcome it <laughs> again it's just another case of keeping politics out of sport especially when you take the route Megan Rapino has because it never does serve you and you know I've not seen this in quite some time but the way Megan Rapino has acted the stuff she said and of course the other teammates not singing the national anthem but because of the way they've acted a lot of people don't actually like the team that's a shame right they have become so woke and so arrogant and I think they're above everybody else that people are turned away from them. I've seen people on social media happy that she missed. How can you do that? People are happy America lost. Americans are happy America lost. They, can, they think it's great she missed a penalty. But people want to argue she's doing great things for the women's side of football. Again, I highly disagree. To turn your own country away from your team is disgraceful. And there's only really one person to blame, one team to blame, and that's Megan Rapino and her teammates. There was no need to not sing the national anthem. You know, you can dislike your country, whatever, okay. But at least just sing the national anthem. Don't put your politics on show. You know, sport is about cheering for your country, standing up for your country, progressing to the final, not showing you dislike your country. And talking of penalties and scoring the final penalty that will see your team through and win the match, uh, my team Arsenal actually beat Man City on penalties. Very lucky to get to that stage in the first place. But if you want to see a player step up to the plate and make sure his team wins, well, here's what it looks like. It's convenient it happened on the same day as well, you know. But that's the end of the video, ladies and gentlemen. If you have enjoyed today, please, for me, make sure to leave a like rating. If you're new, hit that subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you never miss a video. But until next time, it has been your boy JD. Have a great day, stay safe, and I'm out. Peace.